Good morning. We pick the story up with Cornelius and Peter meeting each other. Cornelius, this Gentile man who uh, was not of the people of God, didn't have any Jewish background, but he was a God-fearing man and had prayed often and God had heard his prayer and wanted him to come into salvation uh, through this means that he had provided Jesus, his own son. He wanted him to know of this gospel, so he sent him to meet with Peter. And he had given Peter understanding. Look, Peter, what was just for the Jews has now been opened up to all mankind. Peter is uh, now meeting with Cornelius. Cornelius, when he first sees Peter, says he falls down at Peter's feet as if to sort of honour him. And Peter says, no, get up, I'm just a man. It's all about Jesus. It's all through Jesus. And then he goes on to say, look, we we are witnesses of this Jesus. This is who you're looking out for. This is what you want to know about. This is what you need to know. It's all been pointing to Jesus. Let's pick it up with what Peter says to him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. It's beautiful to see uh, two uh, groups of people being reconciled to each other, but also reconciled, more importantly, to God. That these people who were once far away, Gentiles not included, are now being brought near, grafted right into the household and people of God. As we look at this story, we can see so many hurdles or obstacles in the way. Uh, Peter himself would have been one of the obstacles, being a devout Jew. No way can I get near a Gentile. But God smashed through that barrier. He said, no, I've made a way through my son. Let me explain it to you. He gave him that vision that we heard about just previously. That uh, Cornelius himself could have thought, well, I can't come. I'm not Jewish. And yet God smashed a way through that with his son, opening a way, uh, opening the dividing wall, uh, tearing the curtain in the temple from top to bottom, where you could never step foot before, now opened through Jesus, through his death and resurrection. It's stunning. It's available for all. And uh, and God, uh, we see in this passage, uh, gives us ingredients that we can still go after today. At the beginning of this is is prayer. Cornelius is a man of prayer. Uh, he had been praying and it had brought him to revelation of God. And then we see God of grace, grace of God who receives who is previously not able to be received, uh, that makes a way for the sinner. Who God, God who the Bible says, um, does not treat us as our sins deserve. There's grace that's poured out through this passage, through the other ingredient, the gospel of Jesus. It's all through Jesus's perfect uh, life, his death and resurrection. He's the one that's made a way. And then we see a witness. We see witnesses, Christians saying, this is what I've experienced. I was dead and now I'm alive. I was lost and now I'm found. We saw him. You know, Peter saying, we saw him. We, we, we beheld, we saw, this is what I know of him. This is what we can do as well. And then finally, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Effectively, we see in this a God who says, I will have who I want. I will save who I want. We see so clearly in this passage, it's a supernatural thing. We cannot just argue people into Christianity. 
We can't just convince people into Christianity. No, the Holy Spirit gripped Cornelius' heart and the Holy Spirit poured out on them. Uh, and these Gentile men and women, I expect, came through uh, to salvation and, the, and an awareness of the Holy Spirit's power. These are the same ingredients we can uh, look to today in prayer, pleading with God, God, please pour out your spirit that people would be convicted of sin. Please, God, pour out your spirit that uh, we would know your grace in our time. Pour out your spirit that we would be witnesses of this great salvation through the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must call on God for his supernatural activity. Can I encourage you to join us tomorrow night, Thursday night, uh, 8 till 9 at the uh, uh, online for a Zoom prayer and vision evening where we're going to petition God. And one of the things we'll be petitioning him for will be, God, would you pour out your Holy Spirit on your church and on Ipswich that many thousands would turn to you in our lifetime? Would you turn hearts to you? Would you cause there to be a, a healthy fear of God where many come to you, where seekers come, where we are able to receive them well like Peter was ready for Cornelius, where we're able to speak to them what we know. This is what I've seen. This is what I've been a witness of, this Jesus. Why don't we pray for those things together tomorrow night? Keep expecting that he will be faithful, that he is gracious and that his love uh, there's a great song that I love, a uh, worship song that says, uh, His love is fierce, His love is strong, it is furious. That this God will punch through the barriers, break down walls, uh, He will smash down hurdles, He will smash down mountains and obstacles that could have been built for thousands of years to say, I will have them for myself. He's a rescuer. Let's keep asking Him to rescue the lost in Ipswich. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful story. We ask you, God, give us a fervent hunger to see you pour out your spirit, giving us uh, opportunities, courage, boldness to preach this good news, and also pouring out your spirit on those that are lost so that they could come to you in their thousands, pouring out your spirit so they would know the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit on their lives, and that they have salvation would be authentic, strong, and secure, that their feet would be put on a rock. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Come and join us tomorrow night, eight till nine. I'll put the link below this. See ya.